Right. One of the topics that's very important in strength of materials is designing drive shafts, figuring out the shear stresses in drive shafts to make sure they don't fail. Now there's a problem I really like to do, and that's where we compare a bulldozer with a race car. Now when I was little, my grandfather had this big yellow bulldozer. It was a D4 cat bulldozer, and sometimes I got to ride around on it with him. And I asked him one time, how much horsepower this bulldozer makes. Now, I'm American, he's American, we think in terms of horsepower. Um, I'm going to do the problem in terms of kilowatts because the metric system is much more universal and frankly makes a lot more sense. Anyway, he said it makes about 65 horsepower, about somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 kilowatts. I thought, boy, that's not very much, especially for pushing around big piles of dirt, and yet it seems to be working. What's going on here? I was an engineer probably even as a little kid. Conversely, let's look at a Formula One race car. Now this makes something on the neighborhood of a thousand horsepower, about 750 kilowatts. There's two big differences. Number one is the transmission, and number two is the engine. This makes a very small amount of horsepower at a low uh, rotational speed, so it makes a lot of torque. This makes a lot of horsepower at a very high rotational speed, 15,000 RPM. This is why these cars sound like angry bees when they're running down the racetrack. Okay. 15,000 RPMs is extremely fast, so even though the power is very high, the torque that we're about to figure out is not going to be very much higher than this. The other part is that there's a transmission here that gears the engine down very, very far, so the maximum speed on a bulldozer is a few kilometers an hour, a few miles an hour. The maximum speed on this may be 300 kilometers an hour, somewhere around 180 miles an hour. This can push around big piles of dirt at low speed, this can't even get out of the pits on its own. When this is leaving the pits, it has to be pushed out by the pit crew. Okay? And we're going to find out why here in a minute. All right. We've been uh, going to design a solid drive shaft. Now most drive shafts aren't solid, but to make things simple for the, uh, the purposes of this problem, let's assume it is. And we have an allowable shear stress of 50 megapascals. Now the governing expression we've got is that tau equals tr over j and for a solid shaft, let's write this in terms of uh, diameter as well. Uh, we're going to work in terms of diameter. So there's TR over J is TD over 2J. Now, for a solid shaft, J equals pi over 32 D to the fourth. Right? So if you simply substitute that into there, what you get is tau equals 16 T or make sure I get this right, pi d cubed. All right? That's the governing equation. Well, the thing we don't know is d, so let's solve for that. d is the third root, since that's cubed, of 16t over pi times tau. Now, make sure that's pi, that's tau, different, different things. This is the expression we're going to use. Okay. First thing we need to know about both engines is the torque produced by both of them. For the bulldozer, we have P over N, since power equals torque times uh, rotational speed. Torque equals power over rotational speed. And this is 50,000 watts over, that's a newton meter per second, over 125.66 radians per second. So that's a newton meter per second. That's radians per second. That's going to cancel out. So we're going to get newton meters, exactly what we want. And that turns out to be, uh, let's see, 397.89 newton meters. And this is a little more than you'd find in a large passenger car. It's really not that much. But a passenger car makes a lot more than that much power. So this is a function of the diesel engine turning slowly diesel engines like to make lots of torque. And because then since the transmission behind the engine gears the, the engine down even farther, you get lots and lots of torque at very low speeds. Exactly what you want for a bulldozer. So put that there. Let's figure out the answer now for the race car. Same expression. So we've got now 750,000 newton meters, or, or kilowatts, I should say, 750,000 watts. 
to Newton meters per second over, uh, let's see, 1570.8 radians per second. Again, seconds cancel out and I'm left with Newton meters, so the units work. And what I get here is 477.46. meters. Okay. Not a whole lot more, something like 10%. Okay, let's bring it home here. Last thing we got to do is plug the, the uh, torques we just calculated into the governing expression and figure out what the uh, diameter of the drive shaft is going to be. So for the bulldozer, let's do it this way. That's going to be the cube root of 16 times 397.89 newton meters divided by pi times tau, which is now 50 megapascals, 10 to the 6 newtons per meter squared. So let's look at the units real quick. Newtons are going to cancel out. I'm going to get meters cubed. Cube root, I'm going to get meters. So that works out here in my turn my screen back on so I can look up the answer for us. And it comes out to 34.349 millimeters. Okay, not huge, about that much. If you're working in English units, that's a little more than an inch. Okay, so the diameter for the bulldozer is 34.349 millimeters. I want to be clear, this is the diameter of the shaft coming out of the engine, not the shaft coming out of the transmission to the wheels. All right, so for the bulldozer, we've got 34.349. Because the engine only has a little bit more torque, the, the drive shaft coming out of the engine to the transmission in the race car is really only going to be a little bigger, maybe 10%, since this is about 10% bigger. Even though this is a cube root expression, it'll be somewhere around 10%. Sixteen times forty seven, I'm sorry, four seventy seven point four six Newton meters divided by pi times fifty times ten to the sixth Newton per meter squared. And again, our units are going to work out. Crank that out, and you get, uh, let's see, thirty six point five millimeters. It's actually point five oh two millimeters. All right, so look at that. Even though we have these big differences, there's only a two millimeter difference in the size of the drive shaft. 